A prince without a heart to love, a knight who fears death, a villain without resolve, and a princess who cannot express her love. These are the characters of The Prince and the Raven, the story that came to life in the anime Princess Tutu. Yuto is a prince that sacrificed his heart to seal an evil raven, losing his emotions in the process. Ahiro is a duck that has transformed into a girl to take on the role of Princess Tutu and collect the scattered pieces of the prince's heart. Fakir is Muto's trusted knight, but he is destined to lose his life in the battle against the raven. Ru is the daughter of the raven, and as such she must play the role of the antagonist as Princess Kreihi, although she is conflicted about her feelings for the prince. Princess Tutu is supposed to return the prince's heart back, but she will be turned into a speck of dust after confessing her love. The prince will then fight the raven once more and Fakir will die protecting him. Backed into a corner, the prince will be forced to shatter his heart again to seal the raven, only for the cycle to repeat. It is a story about despair and the inevitability of fate, as the characters are all destined to meet a tragic end. Or so we are led to believe. There is in fact a hidden villain, Josselmeyer, the author and narrator of the story. What the characters perceive as fate is actually the author's will, as he is the one pulling the strings behind the scenes. Josselmeyer manipulates the events of the story either through direct involvement or through Edel, a puppet whose purpose is to guide the characters towards their fate. As the author of the story, Drosselmeyer decides what roles the characters play in his magnificent tragedy. From the beginning, Drosselmeyer's story follows a cyclical structure, a formulaic sequence of events designed to evoke a strong emotional response from the audience. A troubled character will hold one of the shards and it will be up to Princess Tutu to help them solve their issue and return the shard back to the prince. Mewtwo wants to regain his heart, but every time he gets an emotion back, he inevitably ends up suffering. Just like the main story, the side stories build upon the theme of cyclicality, as they end on a bittersweet note, after which we are returned to the main plot where our protagonists are still left struggling to avoid their tragic fate. By episode 13, which marks the end of the first half, we get to the climax. Princess Kreihi and Princess Tutu fight over Muta's heart to see which one of them will be loved by the prince, while Fakir ends up seemingly dying in the fight against Kreihi. Confessing her love to Muto is the only way for Princess Tutu to save him from Princess Kreihi's grasp, but doing so will turn her into a speck of dust and ultimately seal her fate. Just as the story seems to approach its hopeless conclusion, Princess Tutu comes up with a way to confess her feelings to the prince without using words. Instead, she chooses to communicate her love through dance. The heart shard of love is thus returned to the prince, Tutu is spared of her tragic fate, and even Fakir manages to avoid his death, as Ethel defies Drosselmeyer's will and sacrifices herself to save the doomed knight. Just as it appears that the characters manage to achieve their deserved happy ending, the idyllic scene is interrupted by Jusselmeyer's narration. Josselmeyer's story is by no means over, the seemingly happy ending was in fact just the calm before the storm, as in the second act there is a new dramatic twist. Muto's heart has been tainted with the raven's blood and it is slowly turning him into a faithful servant of the raven that preys upon the hearts of unsuspecting victims. Once again, Josselmeyer throws us into a new status quo where the character's hopes will inevitably be crushed by despair, 
in an endless emotional roller coaster that will keep the audience on the edge of their seats. Josselmeyer's tale has everything a story needs good against evil, love and hate, hope and despair. Well, everything except for maybe one thing. Just like the titular prince, what the Josselmeyer's story lacks is heart. Josselmeyer pushes his characters into the roles they need to fulfill to further his predetermined plot and create dramatic tension, and so he doesn't let them develop outside of their assigned roles. They are not allowed to be anything but one-dimensional archetypes that follow the outline of the story, and as such they are just discarded when the role is fulfilled. That is the ultimate fate that awaits Princess Tutu when she returns the prince's heart. And that was also meant to be the fate of the Night Fakir, who was supposed to perish in the first part of the story. Although he managed to survive, he is no longer needed in Josselmeyer's narrative, and is left powerless to stop the events unfolding before his eyes. But here's where a twist is introduced. In episode 20, we learned that just like Josselmeyer, Fakir also has the power to turn stories into reality. Instead of a sword, the knight now has to wield a pen. It is here that the story of Princess Tutu takes on a new dimension. It becomes a commentary about how stories are written and how different authors approach writing them. In this context, Fakir and Josselmeyer represent two types of authors. Unlike Josselmeyer, Fakir is hesitant to use his power because he understands that stories can be dangerous from a first-hand experience. When he was a kid, his parents died because of a story he wrote that ended up becoming reality, so he hasn't written anything ever since. He has, however, inadvertently already started writing his own story long ago. When the prince was wandering the town alone after having sealed the raven, he was the one that gave him a new role. Mewtwo has thus been given a name and an identity to fit in the new world he has found himself in. Just like with Mewtwo, Fakir also gives Edel a new role. From Edel's remaining bits of wood a new character is born, the puppet Uzura, and it is up to Fakir to help her find a place in the story. In Josselmeyer's tale, Edel was just a plot device whose sole purpose was to direct the other characters to the next story beat, so she wasn't supposed to be a full-fledged character. On the other hand, Uzura slowly develops as she interacts with the other characters and the world around her, and thanks to her experiences, she is able to gain something that Edel never could. <laughs> It goes without saying that when stories are written, there has to be an outline for the roles of the characters and the progression of the plot. However, Josselmeyer adheres to the outline too rigidly, so his characters end up being one-dimensional puppets that are trapped in predetermined roles. But when Fakir finally starts writing to save Ahiru, the words come naturally to him without prior planning. <laughs> Fakir lives the story through his characters, he becomes one with the world of the story and lets the plot flow naturally, while Josselmeyer acts as an entity outside the main narrative and often interrupts its flow to return the characters back to their original roles to prolong the tale. Ahiru is not just Princess Tutu, Fakir sees her as a multifaceted character that goes beyond her minor role in the story of the Prince and the Raven. She is the protagonist of her own story. The same goes for Ru, who never wanted to play the role of the villain. Ru just wanted for the prince to love her the same way that she loved him. When Mewtwo gets turned into a raven, it's her love that makes him human again. That way she breaks free from the role that Josselmeyer assigned to her, and Fakir writes the rest of the story accordingly. Josselmeyer's writing is formulaic, one could say mechanical, 
So it's not surprising that in the last episode we find out that the story was indeed being written by a machine all along. A machine created by Josselmeyer to keep writing stories even after his death. That means that the Josselmeyer in the story was just another fictional character all along, merely playing the role he was assigned. Meanwhile, Fakirchan sends his role in the story by learning what it really means to be an author. He finds the answer to that question when he communicates with the tail spinner's tree in episode 21. <laughs> すべては一つ、一つは全て、全てのHaving a plan in mind is indeed useful, but sometimes a flash of inspiration is all that is necessary to start writing a story. The start is a happy accident, the end the fate for which it's meant. A core idea, a simple concept, the base of the narrative upon which all the stories will be layered and ultimately end with. For Josselmeyer's story, this basic theme was despair, while for Fakir, it's hope. But the theme is just the beginning, it is up to the author to build upon the thematic foundation. By seeing what cannot be seen and hearing what cannot be heard, he creates a whole new fantastical world that is removed from reality, but at the same time feels real, both to the author and the reader as well. As readers, we are thrown into the author's world, we get to know its story and its characters, or rather, we live the story through its characters. A great story can make us experience their joys and struggles firsthand, and a great author can create characters that feel as complex as actual people, instead of just being marionettes pushed around by the author's schemes. Together with the author, the reader is also one with the story, one with the events unfolding in this fantastical world, everywhere and nowhere at the same time, finding both excitement and comfort. But a good author mustn't forget that the story has to end at some point. It is here that Fakir risks making the same mistake as Drosselmeyer. He is so attached to Princess Tutu that he can't find the strength to make the story end. After all, ending the story means parting with its characters. But a story that keeps on going forever is bound to lose its meaning along the way. Fakir's story risks becoming the same as Drosselmeyer's a self-perpetuating series of events without a clear goal or purpose. At some point, the tale has to end, we have to return to reality and say goodbye to the world of the story. With this in mind, Fakir proceeds to end his story with Princess Tutu's help. <laughs> What was supposed to be the ultimate tragedy, a story about an endless cycle of despair has turned into a story about the power of hope. From the embodiment of inevitable despair, Fakir turns the tragic character Ahiru into the embodiment of undying hope. Thanks to Ahiru's resolve, Muto saves Ru and together they defeat the raven once and for all. And so, Jusselmeyer's plans are foiled, and the story finally approaches its long overdue ending. It's time for Fakir, and for us as well, to say goodbye to the characters we got to know through our bittersweet journey. Muto and Ru fly back to the world of the story, while Ahiru returns to being a regular duck. Everything is as it was before the story started. Ending a story brings a sense of accomplishment and closure, but it also brings a certain degree of sadness for the world we are leaving behind. However, the ending of a story brings on the beginning of another. One door closes, but another one opens. It's time for Fakir, and for us as well, to move on to a new story. 
and hopefully it'll be as amazing as the last one. <laughs>